evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining in with us. We're going to ask that you hit that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. In my reading on today, I read that Satan has a strategy. He has a game plan. His strategy has many parts. But one of Satan's main tricks is to cause us to miss the goodness of God. Satan wants us to complain about what we don't have, so we will lose sight on what God has given us. I'm telling you tonight that we cannot let Satan win. We have to start by praising and thanking God for all the things that he has provided for us and all the things he has done for us. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we have to find a way to praise God and give God all the glory and all the praise that's due his name. Our scripture is coming from Philippians 4, 6 through 8. And it reads, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Our song today is, We Give You Praise, Lord. We give you praise for all that you have done. Lord, we give you praise. Give you praise, Lord. 
Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping us, blessing us, and wrapping your arms around us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for you are God, and you are God alone. We thank you, Father God, for blessing our lives to realize that you are God, giving us a mind to thank you and to praise you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing our lives and saving our souls, forgiving us for our sin, and buying us back from the devil, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We come now, Father God, thanking you for the word of God. We thank you for blessing our lives and keeping us, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to bless us as we study your word, that your word will fall on good soil, that your life, Father God, will be reflective in our lives, and that your holiness, Father God, will bless us, that we will bless others. It's in the precious, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and thank God. Yes, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Yes, we do. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. Yes, Lord. For everything that you have already done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for what you have already done, for what you have done with us, through us, and for us. And we praise the Almighty and the humble God. We thank God for blessing us and keeping us. And we ask him to continue to watch over us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're in Colossians again tonight, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 is where we are tonight. And we'll continue our study on who Jesus is and what, what difference he has made to us. Thus far, we realize that Jesus is the reason why we have our redemption. We have wisdom through him. We have spiritual understanding through him. We are fruitful and we increase in our fruitfulness through Jesus the Christ. And we thank him for being God and being God alone. Amen. We realize now that God is long-suffering and he is patient with us. Yes. And because he is long-suffering and patient with us, we ought to give him the glory, the honor, and all the praise. Amen and amen tonight. Amen. So we're looking at verses 13 and 14 tonight. Uh, that's Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 and 13 is where we will be tonight. And somebody just said, it's only two verses, but let me tell you, when we finish unpacking it here tonight, you will understand why there are only two verses. The larger part of this pericope is verses number nine through verse number 18. However, that we are taking it in small bites so we can walk through this word of God as only God can teach us to do it. Amen, amen, amen. And amen. So we are in in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, where when you found it, you will discover these words. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, of his love, of the son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin. Through him we have redemption. Uh, through his blood for the forgiveness of sin. So the author begins verse 13 by saying, he, what is this he or who is this he he's talking about? You have to go back to the first part of the pericope and when you go back to the first part of the pericope, you will find out very well that the he is the son of God that he's talking about. God is talking about he, and as the writer of, of Colossians, which is the apostle Paul, says he, he is talking about Jesus the Christ, the son of the awesome, the amazing God that we serve. So he's talking about Jesus the Christ, the son of God, the beloved one of God himself. So he says, he says, he was delivered, he has delivered us 
from the power of darkness. He who, Jesus the Christ, the son of the awesome God, has delivered us. He has delivered us. This word delivers means the word rush, to draw, to rescue. This word delivered means that God has rushed. He has drawn. He has rescued us from a burning hell. This word deliver means to rush. And it comes with the idea of a rushing current of water. Whenever someone stands in the water, whenever someone stands in the water and the water gets strong and powerful, there's a rushing going on. There is an idea of a current that's flowing and it's rushing. And many times it will blow you back toward the shore or blow you away from the shore. That's how God has delivered us through Jesus Christ. There was a rushing. He, he rushed us out of Satan's grasp. Uh, he, he drew us away from Satan's arms. He rescued us. Like a mighty current, he pulled us away from the hands of Satan. I say to you tonight, everybody that's born again, everyone who has received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God has rushed you away. Yes. God has drawn you away. He has Thank pulled you. you away. Matter of fact, God has rescued you. Okay. If you're saved. And if you're not sure you're saved, you need to make sure that you're saved tonight. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember becoming saved, you need to make sure you're saved tonight. Yes. I have led many of people to Christ who didn't understand the plan of salvation. This plan of salvation, this deliverance that Paul talks about in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13, this deliverance, this drawing away from the devil, this rescuing us from the devil, it's a blessing to us when we realize that we're only saved through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. You need to be saved here tonight. You need to be born again tonight. You need to be delivered tonight yes. because God has like a current, a rushing and a pulling and a drawing away in order to rescue you from the wiles of the devil. So he says that he has delivered us. Who is us? Previously, he talks about the saints. He talks about those who are believers, those who walk after God, those who are saved, those who are born again. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, this word power is not like previous words that we've studied the word power. This word power is exclusia power. It is that power that tells us that we have authority. It is the power that tells us that, that, that Jesus have authority. It is the power that tells us that the devil in his darkness has authority. Yeah. So this power is the same as we see with a police officer or with a military person. It is authority. It is jurisdiction. It is liberty. It is the right. This word power is the ability and dominion. So look at what it says. It says he has delivered us from the power, from the ability, from the dominion, from the right. He has delivered us from the right. He has delivered us from the very darkness of sin. God has delivered us. And because he has delivered us, he has blessed us quite a bit. He has blessed us above all. He has blessed us tremendously. God has blessed us. He has delivered us. We now are no longer in darkness. We have the godly rights, the God-given rights that have been given to us through Jesus Christ. When we, when we look at these verses, right here in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, verse 13 declares that he has delivered us from the power 
from the authority, from the jurisdiction. He has delivered us from the right of darkness. He says, he says that he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. this, this word darkness means obs obscurity. This word darkness is, is the error of our ways. This word darkness means shadiness. God has delivered us from the shadiness of the devil, from the power of the shadiness. He has delivered us from the obscurity that we were once in. Let me tell you, if you weren't saved, if you wasn't born again, if you didn't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and all of us have been to that point, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you're still living in darkness. You're still living in shadiness. You're still living in obscurity, and you're still living by the errors of your ways. Thank God. Thank God that he is a just God. Thank God that the God we serve is such an awesome and such an amazing God until he has delivered us from shadiness. Mm -hmm. And this word shadiness paints a picture of a shade tree or a building that casts a, a shadow upon one when the sun is shining on the opposite side. This word shadiness also describes us in our dark ways, meaning that when we, were without, when we were without Christ, then we were a shady character. So this word darkness means that God, God has delivered us from the darkness. This word darkness means that we no longer live in obscurity. We no longer live in shadiness, and we no longer live under the power, the authority, the dominion of darkness. So we've been delivered. We've been delivered. First of all, you need to understand that when God delivers us, when God saves us, whenever we are born again, God does something with us. And what God does, first of all, he, he delivers us from the power of of sin. He delivers us from the dominion of sin, and he delivers us from the, pre the presence of sin in the future. So first of all, God delivers us from the penalty of sin. The first thing that God delivers us is from the penalty of sin. And everyone who has sin have a penalty. That penalty is darkness. That penalty is hell. If you are not saved, you are going to hell. If you do not believe the story and trust this story of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross, you are on your way to hell. And let me tell you, hell was made for somebody but you don't have to go to hell. Yes. God has made his yes. son available to us so we can be delivered from darkness. Mm -hmm. So he has conveyed us. He has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Mm -hmm. He has delivered us. He has, he has conveyed us. This word conveyed means he has transferred us. He has not only transferred us, he has translated us. This word conveyed means that he has turned us and he has exchanged us. He has carried us away. No one could do it but Jesus. So God has delivered us, first of all, from the penalty of sin. We don't have to end up in hell. God has delivered us. And if we trust the story, we have that deliverance power walking in us. The Bible teaches that the same Holy Spirit that raised up a dead Jesus, once we are born again, now we have that same Holy Spirit in us. Yes. Let me just say to you, you don't have to get in another line to receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to speak in a tongue in order to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because once you are born again, once you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit comes in all at one time because he is the triune God. And the triune God himself is never separated when he does something great for mankind. Mm -hmm. So he, he, has, he has conveyed us. He has translated us. 
He has, he has transferred us. He has turned us and exchanged us and changed us because he has carried us away. Isn't that good news? Look at what it says. First, first, when it says uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, he says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness mm -hmm. and conveyed. I'm reading New King James. The New King James uses the word conveyed. That means he's been transferred. He has conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. He has conveyed us. Whenever there's a kingdom, there's a king. <laughs> Wherever you find a kingdom, there is a king. There's someone with authority. There's someone in charge. Anytime we talk about a man building a kingdom, that means there's a king there. And I stopped by here on my way to the rapture to let you know that Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is the king of the kingdom that he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. This word kingdom means rule. This word kingdom means royalty. This word kingdom means another realm. This word kingdom means reign. So this word kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and he says, it is where God rules. Mm -hmm. It is because once we are born again, once we're saved, and we've been conveyed, turned, and exchanged to the kingdom, the kingdom of God's son, we now are royal. We have royalty. We have royal blood running through our veins. Don't let anybody tell you that since you're saved, you're not royalty. You have royal blood running through your veins. You have the blood of Jesus Christ himself because we've been translated, conveyed. We've been transferred into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God's son. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. One translation says it like this. It says that, that he, we have been translated into his dear son. This, this dear son is his loving son, yes. the one that God loved. When you look at John 3, 16, it will tell you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, yes. that whosoever believes in him will not, shall not, cannot perish, but have eternal life. When we look at this word, dear son, it is an infection. It is, it is an affectionate type of love. It is his love uh, one. It is the loving one of God. And look at what it says. It says in John 3, 16, it says it like this. God has given his only begotten son that we will not perish. This word begotten in the original Greek text is not begotten son as we think it is. It is this word begotten means that it is our his only unique son. His only unique son, the only unique son by which God has given us his only begotten son. There is none like him. There is nobody like God. Let me just tell you, that excites me because God himself, our God, there is no God like our God. And therefore, there is no son of God like God's son, Jesus the Christ. He is God's only begotten son. The word begotten, remember now, the word begotten in John 3, 16, that word really, really means that he is God's only unique son he is God's one of a kind, one of a kind. There is none like him. He's God's one of a kind son. So we have, we've been conveyed into the kingdom of the son. And this son is of his love. Look at what it said. It says we have been conveyed into, into the kingdom of his son. Who is this son? The son is the closest to kin. Matter of fact, the son is the closest to kin. 
whenever, whenever you have a will, and everybody ought to have one, whenever you have a will, or whenever you go to the hospital, and you cannot make decisions on your own, mm -hmm. then they want to know who is the close to kin. Mm -hmm. And whenever a will is left for you, that you will be the beneficiary of that will, many times it is the closest to kin that benefit <laughs> from the will, unless, unless you're still walking in darkness, unless you're still shady. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people leave their money and their possessions to people who are not family members at all. They leave them to those who are not shady. So when we look at the text, we're talking about God's only begotten son, God's only unique son, God's one of a kind son. The closest to kin, it means his kinship, it is God's loved one. It is God's loved one. It is God's loved one. So God has, has blessed us so much so until he delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us, transferred us, translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. God loves this son. God loves this son. Uh, even, even as you love your children, God loves his son. On several occasions, God says, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you, <laughs> do you have a child in whom you're well pleased? Mm -hmm. Do you have a son or a daughter in whom you're well pleased? My next question to you is, are you a child in whom your parents are well pleased or would be well pleased? I, I try I try to make sure I try to make sure that if I go wrong it won't get back to mom and daddy. <laughs> I grew up with the concept that there's a great respect there and because of the respect that I have for mom and daddy even if I did some wrong I would go into shingles if I thought it would get back to mom and daddy. Because the fact of the matter is, they're my close to kin, they, they've invested in me, and I want to always be a son that they are well pleased with. Even today, at the age of 57, I want to make sure that mama is well pleased with me. <laughs> I want to make sure that I respect her to the highest, because I, along with my brothers and my sister, is her close to kin. And we ought to make sure that respect is on the table when it comes to close to kin. So in verse number 13, we, we realize that God has rescued us. He has saved us from the very power of darkness. And he has transferred us, translated us. He has placed us into the kingdom. So in other words, we have been placed in the kingdom of the born again. We've been placed, even while we're living on, place, on planet Earth, we're still already in the kingdom of God. That's why we cannot say that God, God is going to bless us in such a way that you need to work out your soul salvation. The text doesn't say. It does not say work out your soul salvation because your soul has already been saved. So you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What that says is we ought to have sanctification. That's the next thing that God saves us from through Jesus Christ. First of all, I told you he saves us. He saves us from the, from the very penalty of sin. The second thing, he saves us from the power of sin. That's right there in verse 13 of Colossians chapter 1. And then one of these days, he's going to save us from the very presence of sin, we're going to be glorified. And the reason why we don't have to worry about it because our soul has been anchored in the Lord from the day of salvation. So we don't have to work out our soul salvation. We just have to work out our salvation, the Bible says, with fear and trembling, with respect unto God. We have to work out our salvation. Let's look at verse number 14, and I'll leave you alone, let you go back to eating your beans or whatever you eat tonight. Verse 14 says, in whom? What is he talking about when he says in whom? He's talking about the son. 
which son? The son of God. He's talking about the only begotten son. He says in verse number 14, Colossians chapter 1, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins. The word redemption, this word redemption means, means to pardon. This word redemption means, means to, to, uh, to have remission. This word redemption means to set from any blame, to be set free from any blame. It, were, it means to, to be declared free from any blame. It means to be absorbed. Absorb. That, that word is spelled uh, A-B-S-O-L-V-E. A-B-S-O-L-V-E. In other words, God has blessed us to be uh, absorbed, absorbed. We have been absorbed. So, so the fact of the matter is we are set free from all blame. We are set free from all guilt. We are set free from all responsibility. Let me just tell you, you can't buy your way into heaven. You can't save yourself. And not only that, you cannot work your way into heaven. Because the text declares right here in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, it declares that Jesus Christ, it's, it, it uses the phrase, he, mm -hmm. him, the son, the Son has caused us to have redemption. Redemption is pardon. Redemption is purchase. Redemption is to buy back. When you've been redeemed, somebody has bought you back. Let me just stop here and say the word redemption means to buy back. It means to purchase. But let me just say to you, not only did Jesus buy us back, he also brought us back. That's what he's talking about in verse number 13. Not only did, did he buy us back, we have redemption through him. He also bought us back and brought us back. He has brought us back. And so the results of him buying us back is salvation. Amen. The result of Jesus Christ buying us back, and I'll tell you later on throughout this verse, how he bought us back and he brought us back. Let's look further. He says, he says in verse number 14, Colossians chapter one, in whom we have redemption. We have redemption through Jesus Christ. We have been purchased. We've been bought with a price. Let's see what he says that price was. Through his blood. Mm -hmm. The blood that was shed on Calvary. Jesus paid an awful he bought us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God that Jesus thought enough of mankind to buy us back. He, he bought us back. He, he bought us back, and he did it through the blood that was shed on Calvary. This word blood means blood shed. This word blood, this word blood, this word blood means that, that the kindred blood of Jesus Christ has bought us back. When you look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7, you will understand real well that it was through his blood that he bought us back. It was through the blood that was shed on Calvary for each one of us. He has bought us back. Hallelujah. He has bought us us back. He has not only bought us back, he brought us back. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now, we didn't deserve it. We didn't work for it. We only have to have faith for it. And let me just share with you, even in the process of having faith for it, let me just tell you, the faith even comes from God. The Romans writer, Paul says that God has given to every man a measure of faith. That faith increases as we read his word, through by which faith comes by hearing and hearing through the re reading of the word. So when we walk in faith and we have what is known as strong faith, 
I don't know how you measure if a person's faith is strong or weak, but one thing I do know, when you walk in faith with Jesus Christ, everything doesn't turn you off. When you walk in faith with Jesus Christ, you don't fall out and scream and holler over every little thing. When you walk in faith with Jesus Christ, you need to understand that Jesus has given you that faith. God has issued out that faith. So we don't have anything to brag about. First of all, we can't brag about being saved for Ephesians chapter two, verse number eight and nine says that we are saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Not that we should boast about it. <laughs> it's not of ourselves. We can't even brag about it. So people who are walking around bragging about the faith they have in God, you ought to be bragging on God and how he has given you faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ought to brag. You ought to brag about God. You ought to get excited about God. You ought to brag about the faith that God has issued to you. He gave it to you freely. He, he, was, he, he gave us redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of, of sins. Let me tell you, everybody was born in sin. Everybody was shaping in iniquity. Yeah. And all of us have messed up. Right. All of us have fallen short. All of us need forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And because God has forgiven us, this word forgiveness means a remission. It, it means to be pardoned. It means it's way above what the president does for all the criminals we see in America. Mm -hmm. This word is higher than the poor little pardon that our president give to criminals. Let me tell you, we were criminals. Yes, sir. We had missed the mark. We had fallen short. We had not done those things that God would have for us to do. Yes. And not only have we not done those things that God would have us to do, we've also neglected those things that God would have us to do. And not only with that, we have, we have not only neglected them, we have set ourselves aside to be our own king. We were born like that. When you see proud men, you need to understand they were born like that. And it takes the word of God, it takes God himself to kill it off. So we have to walk by faith. So Jesus Christ in his blood that was shed on Calvary gave us our forgiveness, our pardon from sin. Therefore, we have redemption and we are declared blameless. We are declared not guilty. We are declared to not have any res responsibility because Jesus has taken on the responsibility on our behalf. Finally, the word sins. The word sins means offenses. The word sin means we missed the mark. The word sin means that we don't get to share in the prize. <laughs> if, if Jesus had not died for us on Calvary, if Jesus had not been buried in a borrowed tomb and early that third day morning rose from the dead and allowed us to walk into the Holy of Holies for ourselves, then we would still not be able to share in the prize. What's the prize, preacher? The prize is the kingdom of God. The prize is eternal life in Jesus Christ himself. The prize that we're looking for, we ought to be pressing toward the prize. Back home in Mississippi, we used to have a testimony service. You see, the sanctified church had a long drawn out testimony service. But in the Baptist church, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm for a Christian church, I'm for a church that represent Christ, I'm for churches, regardless of their title, regardless of their denomination, I am for those who walk with Jesus Christ. Yes. That's why we are Christians because Christ Jesus makes us Christ-like. Yes. We can't even be a Christian for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are Christians because of Christ. Yes. He has made us Christ-like. He has wiped away our offenses. 
Now, let me make sure that you don't have a bad understanding and say, I told you that Christians don't sin. What, but when we go to God and confess our sins, Jesus Christ, the same one that died, was buried, and rose again, caught a cloud and got out of here, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's still making intercessions for you and me. Only thing we have to do is honestly confess our sins. Lord, I messed up. And when you, when you pray for your sin, don't, don't just pray a general prayer. You ought to call that sin out. God already knows, so you ought to call it out. God, I ate too much German chocolate cake today. I've done it again, Lord. And most of our sins, we do them over and over again. And, and Peter says in, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18, 19 through 22, but Peter says, if we go back to the same sins that we've been washed from, that we've been delivered from, that we've been cleansed from, then he classifies us as a sow in King James Version, which means a hog. A sow, back home, a sow is a big old pig. It's a big old pig, big old hog. And that hog, regardless of how clean you get him, you can choose this hog as your pet. You can brush him. But as soon as that hog sees some mud, he goes running back to it and rolls over in that mud again. The Bible says that when we sin, we need to pull away from that sin. And when we, we go back to that sin over and over again, we're nothing but like a hog that's running back to the mud. In that same verse, it classifies those who continue in sin, knowing that it's sin, that keeps going back to sin. It says that we are like dogs. And what the dog does, he vomits up and he licks it up. He puke it up, and he licks it up. The, the text says in, in second, second Peter, Peter says that we're nothing but like dogs who have gone back to eat up the lick up on our own vomit again as we are caught in our sins. See, we ought, to, we ought to stop worrying about being caught by the pastor, caught by the mission sisters, caught by the deacons in sin. God sees everything. He even sees our sins. And when we miss the mark, when we sin, we ought to run to Jesus Christ and confess our sins, run to God, confess our sin, because Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, asking God to bless them, asking God to not kill them, asking God to not hold their sins against them. But every time we sin, we miss the prize. <laughs> we miss the mark. We miss the rewards yes. that God has for us in heaven. So I'm saying to you today, you're going to sin. And when you sin, 1 John, John says, 1 John says, verses number 8 and 9, he says, when you sin, not if you sin. I know the King James Version says, if you sin. This word if in the original text simply means when you sin, because <laughs> you're going to sin. When you sin, you need to understand that we have an advocate in Jesus Christ. We have a lawyer. And if we are confess our sin, God is faithful. God is just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me just share with you tonight that God has set us free. God has freed us from the slavery of darkness. He has freed us from the slavery of sin, he has freed us from the graps of the devil. <laughs> and, and on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln of the United States, he signed what is known and he issued what is known as the Immaculation Proclamation. The Immaculation Proclamation is, is, is something that set Americans free all Americans free, there should be no more slaves, no more slavery in the United States of America. Even Alabama, even Mississippi, even Georgia, there should be no more slaves. And it also brought to a bitter, bitter end the civil war that was going on over slavery. 
the Confederate soldiers over the Union soldiers. So we have now our Emancipation Proclamation that was signed by the president, President Abraham Lincoln, January the 1st, 1863. It set us free. It set black men free. It set white men free. It set all Americans, all of us are set free from slavery. And because we've been set free from slavery, we don't have to be anybody's slave. In the text, finally, you find in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, our emancipation is enjoyed only because of the tremendous cost, the amazing price, and the bloodshed that Jesus shed on Calvary. Our emancipation, our freedom, cost Jesus his very life. And no man took his life. He laid it down for his friends. That we will be born again. That we will be saved. And I want to say to you today, this is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to know Jesus you need to know Jesus in such a way that you depart from your sin. You need to know Jesus in such a way that you believe that he died on a skull hill called Calvary. That they buried him in a borrowed tomb. That they, they, they hung him and, and he bled his blood after he was dead. He bled and his blood was given for your redemption. Will you join me tonight in prayer? Just repeating after me and inviting Jesus Christ into your life. If you don't invite Jesus Christ into your life, you will never go to heaven. If you don't trust the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection on Calvary and in Jerusalem, you would never make it to heaven. You got to trust Jesus. So I want you to to come and, and bow your head with me as we meditate on Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Invite him into your life today. It's a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for your sins, for our sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. Will you repeat after me in prayer? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried in a borrowed tomb. I believe that you rose from the dead with all power. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. We believe if you prayed that prayer, believe in the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you're born again. And now you are on your way to heaven. So now you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And you need to join a good Bible teaching church. I extend the invitation to you today to be a part of the New Beginning Church. If you're listening to me today, we welcome you to the New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the center of attention. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Will you join us? And if you have received Jesus as your Savior tonight, inbox me. Let me know that you've received Jesus as your personal Savior. And if you want to join and become a member of the New Beginning Church, inbox me so we can welcome you to the church where Jesus is the captain. If you need prayer, please inbox me and let me know that you need prayer. And we'll be glad to pray with you and to pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for being a part of our church by way of remote location. And now it is offering time. It is time 
to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. It is time to give to the Almighty God. It is time to give to Him. And you can do so. You can give to the New Beginning Church in three means. <clears throat> First of all, you can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is in John in, 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 in John chapter 12, verse 13, 32, rather. John 12 and 32, it says, In I, if I be lifted up, if Jesus be lifted up, he would draw all men unto himself. So Zell, the Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The third way you can give to the New Beginning Church through your tithes and your offering, as well as our visitors contribute to us, is, is by way of P.O. Box. Our P.O. Box number is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77 Four, five, nine. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for, for being a part of our service tonight. This is our Bible study. We are here every Wednesday night at 7.20 <coughs> p.m., 7.20 p.m. for our live broadcast on Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Please join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Please join us. And that will be Sunday school. If you join us at 1045, we welcome you to our regular worship service every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Uh, this Sunday, this Sunday is first Sunday. And because it is first Sunday, we will be celebrating communion. We will have our virtual communion as we do and we have been ever since the month of April virtually. We will have our virtual communion. So please ma'am, please sir, go ahead and get your crackers out, go ahead and get your drink out and join us for communion. As Jesus has said, as often as I do this, <laughs> you as often as you do this, as often as we do this, we show forth his death and suffering until he come again. So Sunday, during our worship service at 1045, we will celebrate what Jesus has done for us in communion. Thank you to our visitors. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for being a part of our service. And to the New Beginning members, thank you so much for, for returning your tithes and offering. Thank you so much for keeping the church financially stable. Thank you. And to our businesses, thank you for mailing in. Thank you for using the cash app. Thank you for using Zelle. Thank you for mailing by way of the P.O. Box, 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you for joining us in uh, financing our church. And those of you who are in between churches, or those of you who have no church home, we welcome you to give your tithes and offering to the New Beginning Church. We thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you do. Now, Lord, we thank you for, for conveying us. We thank you for translating us. We thank you for rescuing us from the darkness, from the obscurity, rescuing us, Father God, from the wiles of the devil. We thank you, Lord, that you have seated us in heavenly places. We thank you for translating and transferring us to the kingdom of your son, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless everybody in my hearing, those who would share this video, those who will start a watch party every video, we pray that you bless those who will hear this video. 
that they, their lives will be changed, their hope will be renewed, their marriages will be restored, that singles will walk in a godly way, and that boys and girls will walk according to what you would have them to walk in, in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Thank you so much again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and also at 1045 a.m. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.